Happy Thursday, folks. Today, we are going to be resetting the battery in my Tesla Model Y. And I learned this trick from none other than my mother, Kim Java, baby. Give it up for Kim. Give it up for Kim. In all seriousness, when I was researching to get my Tesla and trying to understand the battery and all that stuff, I do distinctly remember a, a Kim Java video. That's when I was introduced to my mother, Kim. And she won't admit it, but I'm breaking my silence that Kim Java is my mother. She won't admit it, folks, but it, you always get the truth here. We're on our way to a supercharger that is about, that's gonna about drain my battery. I'm gonna show you how to reset the BMS system, the battery management system, or blowout management system. Very simple, also the video is sponsored by Masterworks and we'll talk about them shortly. I, I love what Masterworks does, so I, I love this sponsorship, and uh, hopefully we can continue. But if you guys don't support them, they'll cut me off, and that's life. Let's get some facts. Okay, so when I bought my Model Y new, this is a 2020 long range, it had 316 miles of range. Now, shortly after, there was a large software update that gave me an additional 10 miles of range, so technically, 326. Because that was a software update and not what the car came rated from from the factory, we are going to stick to the 316 mile range that my car came from from the factory as a baseline. So currently I'm at 52% state of charge and that relates to 147 miles of estimated range. Now the range displayed here is generally not that accurate. Also, looking at your battery's degradation through this, through your displayed range, is not an accurate way to do that. I know that. Supposedly, once you reset your battery, that should give you an accurate estimation of how much range you can get out of your car and what, and closer to maybe what the degradation is. The warranty on your Tesla battery is eight years, 120,000 miles, or having your battery at at least 70% of its original capacity. If in four years, a full charge on your battery is 150 miles, that's under 70% original capacity. Therefore, it will be covered under warranty and you'll have your battery replaced. Today, we are going to see exactly what it is, or at least get a better estimation of it and see if this battery reset actually works. Also, most of my charging is done at home. So occasionally I do go on road trips. I've driven across the country and used the supercharger network. I don't rely on the supercharger network to do all of my charging because I have the NEMA 1450 at home and currently I'm just using the 120 volt in the, in the wall. So I don't rely on superchargers. If you're constantly supercharging your car, that is bad for the battery because just, I mean, just think about it. The amount of heat that you're putting into your car and the, the, way, the way the electrons are blowing into your battery is uh, not good for long-term use. It's fine for every once in a while when you're on road trips and things like that, but charging up to 100% is bad for your battery and constantly supercharging is bad for your battery. And I like to keep my car at 90% state of charge at home. That's what I always leave it at. Some people leave it at 80, that's fine too. I always leave it at 90. After 37,000 miles of driving, my car is currently on a full charge. When I drag it all the way to the right, it shows a full charge at 282 miles of range, which is about 11% loss of range or degradation, whatever you wanna call it. Like I said, that's probably not that accurate. The battery's probably become imbalanced from not ever being charged to 100%. So what I'm going to do today is drive it down under 10% of range and then I'm going to supercharge it all the way up to 100. And we're going to see if that brings the estimated total range up in the car closer to what it actually is. Because the chance of it reducing in 10%, probably not. My old neighbor, he had a Model S, I think about 10 years old, and it only lost 10 miles of range after 120,000 miles. So the point of the video is to show you that you can't always just look at the displayed range. Um, the battery should still be very healthy, but we're gonna see if it works. I always get a kick out of the idea that like, imagine seeing a pink Tesla on the road and then your image of who's driving that car and then it's just me picking my nose. Like it's probably very different for people. They probably expect some crazy person driving the car which would be accurate. Or actually they probably expect like some Scottsdale Ho, like plastic everywhere, like the lips are so big that when they laugh they have to cover up because it curls up. 
that's what they probably picture. Yo, Canada! Per usual, we took a little detour to the Agia Freya National Monument. I, I didn't know there was a river down here, but it says, look at this. The careful observer can see pueblos and mountain lions and coyotes. Did I go the wrong line? Petroglyphs throughout the monument, silent reminders of the native people who once lived in this unique landscape. They would still live here if the whites didn't take them out. That's true. I don't know if that's true. I'm just making shit up. Relax, everyone. Dear, look at this little javelina. Dude, if I saw him, I'd definitely bring him. I'd bring him home. He would eat me. He'd fuck me up in the Tesla. I gotta say, I'm a little interested. See this? I'm interested. I want to see how good, by the way, does the Tesla look in pink? I know some of you idiots uh, have lo said you lost respect for me for wrapping the car, but if you watched all the videos, you'd know why it's pink. I feel like there's a rattlesnake in here. Mm. Oh, it's just paint. Literally just paint. It's just sometimes it is what it is. God, this thing looks good. It looks fat. New Michelins are on it. They look great. Yeah, I'm just trying to drain the battery as much as possible. It says no guns are shooting, but you know you can get shot back here. Folks, I've once again partnered up with Masterworks. With the way the market is today, I find myself constantly looking for ways to diversify my portfolio. So when Masterworks approached me, I was very excited about the collaboration. Just a personal example is things like watches, high-end cars, and artwork are continuing to rise in value, whereas you can see the stock market is a mess right now. So for example, my M2 has gone up in value since I even put 10,000 miles on it. Masterworks was founded in 2017, and since they've been founded, they have over 400,000 users on their investment platform, and have over 80 different kinds of paintings in their collection. When I look at art and expensive art, it's not, it was never intriguing to me because, like, do I appreciate the artwork? Yes. But when I want to go to buy it, I can't afford a $20 million painting. That's where Masterworks comes in. They have over 80 paintings in their collection, and by signing up with the link down in the description, you will have access to own a portion of these paintings or own as much of it as you want. So when Masterworks sells one of the paintings from their collections, the profit of that is returned to you, the investor. So you're able to earn fractionalized shares of paintings that only billionaires were previously able to own. And these are from artists like Andy Warhol, Banksy, Picasso, people that you've heard of even if you're not really into art that much, uh, you're able to earn a fraction of these and get some type of a return. And if that's not enough, from 1995 till 2021, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 by 164%. On some years with the stock market, you're only getting a 5% return. It's very different with contemporary art, and especially right now. Also, the total wealth held in art is about $1.7 trillion, and Deloitte expects that to grow an additional $600 billion over the next few years. So now's a great time to jump in. The link is down in the description. If you want to skip the line and just get right into Masterworks, that's what they've done for my viewers. So link down in the description. That'll get you ahead of the line of everyone else. Demand is very high right now, and the offerings on their platform sell out within hours. So if you'd like to buy your own piece of Picasso or Banksy or whoever, go to the link in the description, join Masterworks. Masterworks, thank you for sponsoring the video. And to all of you who support the sponsors, I sincerely appreciate it. You can go to masterworks.art slash Jeebs. That is the link. It will get you ahead of everyone else. And uh, let me know what you guys end up getting. All right, so we've made it to the supercharger with only 15 miles left, and that is 5% of the battery. So I'm going to charge up now to 100%. I actually, I, when I got up to the other Cords Lake supercharger, I still had 20% battery. So I drove back down to the New River supercharger. Going to charge up to 100% here, and we're going to see where we're at. So as far as me getting the measurement on what my battery's at, the Tesla app anymore does not show like your exact percent. You used to be able to like drag it and see how many miles you could charge to as opposed to percentage it doesn't show that anymore so that's why I use the OptiWatt app which I've shown you guys before OptiWatt lets you uh, track your charging costs and also charge at the most 
green or efficient times for your local grid. So it's a good app. I'll have it linked in the description. Um, I get $5 for every person that goes and signs up, but you guys can do that too. They have a rewards program, so nothing like proprietary to me. When I drag my charger, let's see here. Charge limit, 100%. It currently says 298 miles, which is a huge jump. I think because I've already taken the battery down into uh, an area where it's rarely at. I think I've only been down to 7% before. So this is the lowest I've ever had the battery. So it's able to accurately see its limits. So now we're gonna charge up to 100. It currently says 298 miles, which is a big difference from where it was before. We're gonna charge it up to 100, see where we're at. can see the number climbing currently at 92 kilowatts I think this is a this is a 150 watt 150 kilowatt charger so because of how low my battery is it should get up to like 600 miles per hour we'll see I just had McDonald's for lunch and honestly I can already feel it knocking at the back door so we might have to go take care of that and then see where the, let's actually do that right now before we have an emergency <laughs> Cool thing here is this there's a service technician from Tesla replacing whatever those things are those things I don't know what they are uh, but the, there's a service tech here for from Tesla who's like repairing all this and doing maintenance off it and blocked off a couple of the stations something that's like often looked over as far as what you're buying into maintenancing all these across the country like I went I hit 16 of them on the way to Pennsylvania from Arizona only two out of like 150 or so individual supercharger state like units only two were down across that whole stretch and on the way back they weren't down anymore because someone had fixed them so the supercharger network is extremely well maintained and reliable and it's because of people like that um, actually taking care of them so we are almost done charging here we're at 99 percent as you can see five minutes remaining just trying to figure out those last little depths of the battery the interesting thing, so earlier I showed you we were at 298 miles of range. It now only shows 281 miles of range, which is what it was showing before. Going, driving the car down into the lower percentages of the battery being filled actually gave it a more realistic uh, look at the range, um, but this is not reflecting it as of now. So I'm going to be interested after we charge it to 100%, which I've only done twice before, um, maybe after we drive home and park, to see what it's at then. Okay, so it shows 100%, but there's still five minutes remaining, so we're almost there. Also, I just got a brand new windshield. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked in the description. Um, so I don't have it tinted yet. If you need tint or paint protection film, Dynamic Tint Tempe, Arizona, Tyler's the man. Him and I have become very close friends. His work is excellent, especially for PPF. Like, he tucks all the edges and does an incredible job. Uh, better than I've seen anyone else do in Arizona. So he's done hundreds of Teslas at this point. That's the place to go. Okay, charging complete. Let's take it off. Okay. Oh, the pig is charged and ready to go. Let's go. Almost hit this Tesla service girl. Um, can you imagine I pull out and hit a Tesla service person? Um, okay, so we're good to go. Let's see what the reflected range is now. I don't know if it varies. Sometimes it changes when you have it on the charger versus off the charger. So let's check that out. So after all of that, I did the charging. When I took it down to the 5% range, the Optiwatt app reflected 298 miles on a full charge. After I charged it back up to 100%, it went right back to 280, 281 on a full charge. So when it was in the depths of what the battery can do, it was showing a larger range. After I charged it back up to 100%, it didn't reflect a higher range. So ultimately, I don't think the battery has really degraded um, a substantial amount. It's probably around 4 or 5%. And then also a lot of owners note that it kind of levels off after the first 10 to 15,000 miles just levels off and kind of stays there. So as far as losing distance on the car, probably hasn't lost much, if any, when you're actually using it on the road. It just may not reflect that. Also, while on trips, using the percentage compared to the miles 
is much more accurate. So I hope that helps. Hope you liked the video. Please like the video. Please. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. And we'll see you next time.